So, hello everyone, thank you for coming. Uh, this is a meeting of the Sustainability Committee as a public forum to talk about uh, a proposed plastic bag bylaw, um, which would be on the fall town meeting November 14th at 7 p.m. is when that meeting takes place. Uh, and uh, without further ado, I'd like to turn it over to Tricia Hendel, um, who will give a presentation which describes uh, the, uh, the bylaw and provides some additional information that might be useful to residents. Thank you. All right. So, um, obviously, we're going to cover a lot of information during this presentation. I'll probably try to go. I, I think it's. I think the, the, the sound goes to there. It's yeah. necessarily yes. you guys. So I'll try to speak up. Yes. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, so anyway, we're going to cover a lot of different information. We have quite a few slides, so I'll go through some of them kind of quickly. Stop me if you have questions, but just so we have enough time, actually four questions and discussion at the end, because we are trying to get through a lot of information and want to hear what the concerns, questions, um, and feedback um, uh, that you might have. So the first question is why a bag ban at all? Right? If we look back at um, bag bed history, or oh, sorry, bag plastic bag history, they haven't been around forever. If you are my age, uh, 48, you certainly remember. <laughs> I'm not afraid to admit it. You certainly remember the first part of your life where there were no plastic bags at all. So uh, plastic bags were invented in the 1960s, first introduced to grocery stores, not until 1979. By the end of 1985, that's like you know, middle high school for me, 75% of supermarkets offered them, but most people preferred paper. And only 25% of consumers actually wanted to use the plastic bags. By the 1990s, the plastic bags had captured 80% uh, of the market. So it was really kind of a matter of us being, us as in the consumer, the public, kind of being convinced to use these, these little flimsy things. It wasn't what we first did, right? Um, he said, anyone my age or older, you know who you are. Um, plastic bag use. So here's where we are today. In 2008, <coughs> American used 1. Point, sorry, 102. 0.1 billion bags, billion, B, that's equal to 335 bags per person per, per year. And if you just do a little bit of the math in your head, say you have 50 weeks in a year, you have, maybe I get five bags a week, I make two tiny little trips to the grocery store, that's already 250 bags. Right? If I make two small trips to the grocery store, I don't stop at CVS, I don't go anywhere else, I'm already at 250. So you can see how that adds up really quickly. And for Ashland, that's 5.5 million bags just, just for our little community. It's important to understand that plastic bags are not free. They are free when we get them at the grocery store. They seem that way. So although plastic bags are convenient and cheap, there's a huge environmental expense to them that we also have to take into account because the money in our wallet or in the store's wallet isn't the only cost to society. What we're going to be um, trying to encourage is <coughs> simple alternatives that we used to use, like reusable shopping bags um, and uh, biodegradable single use bags, which could be paper bags, but there could be other types of bags. Things that we did, things that our grandparents did. So, thinking about the purpose of this. Um, why do we want to do this? Why do we want to get rid of plastic bags? Um, these are some of the impacts that it has. First of all, our first purpose is to protect Ashland's natural beauty and its irreplaceable natural resources. This obviously is uh, Ashland State Park, how we like it to look. This sometimes is how our natural environment does look. So these are recent pictures taken in the last few months around Ashland at different locations about where we just saw plastic bags stuck in trees, um, and obviously only as a fraction of what is, is likely out there. The second purpose, protect marine and terrestrial animals and the greater marine and terrestrial environment. This is something I think everyone has heard of and understood, that plastic ba bags harm marine animals. Um, studies show that one in three, te one in three sea turtles have an, in, uh, ingested plastic. Um, they mis mistake the bags for uh, for jellyfish for their food, and we could say, hey, this is a 
you know, it's just sea turtles, right? We have to remember that Massachusetts um, is a marine state, right? We're connected to the ocean, and a lot of um, the success of Massachusetts depends on the ocean, so we need to pay attention to that. Death by plastic due to entanglement and ingestion of plastic trash has increased by 40% in the last decade. So in the last 10 years, obviously, the problem is getting worse and worse, not better and better. Um, and it has impacted, in that time, 36,000 individual um, animals, over 663 species. So it's not just haze the sea turtles we're trying to save. It's much, much, much more widespread than that. Just some other facts, and these are obviously you can give you facts uh, all night long about these things. It's not really our intention, but just to um, understand that it, it's more than just turtles that are affected. Whales, seals, seabirds among marine animals, and even such common things as livestock among earthbound animals. Livestock choking on plastic bags has actually been you know documented um, around the world um, often encouraging those communities to do something about it and put plastic bag regulations in place. You may have seen somewhere online, on television, um, different kinds of stories like this, um, that a whale or other types of marine animals, I saw one about birds um, that, um, that, were, that have died on the beach and the contents of their stomachs, it's kind of, you know, not pleasant to look at. But this is what is happening to our marine animals, right? With this, this garbage that we have out there. It's obviously not been recycled. It's obviously not been put in the trash. It's been put somewhere it shouldn't be and then um, causing problems that we never intended, that no one intended. So these are the types of things we're trying to prevent. Again, plastic bags pollute and degrade these natural environments. That's just a picture of the bottom of the, the bottom of the sea and what exists down there that we can't that we don't see on the surface. This is uh, some data from May of this year. Um, top 10 items collected um, on the beach, I believe is that right now. So we can see a number, all kinds of trash collected on the beach. Number one, cigarette butts, lovely. Two, plastic beverage bottles. Food wrappers, plastic bottle caps, straws and stirs, that's number five. And here we are at six and seven other plastic bags and plastic grocery bags specifically. We divide those into two categories to try to um, get their numbers a little bit more accurate. In between, and their numbers. So 420, almost 425,000 other plastic bags and 402,000 plastic grocery bags specifically picked up on the beach. So this is, I think, one of our most important points. Um, that Massachusetts has long been um, dependent on the ocean for its success and its resources. So it's time to kind of think globally and act locally, which for us is particularly important because we're so dependent on the ocean, um, which borders us. Another purpose. Plastic bags tend to clog storm drains and um, So as we know, these uh, plastic grocery bags cannot be put in recycling. Um, they can be put in the trash, right? But only 3% of plastic bags are properly recycled, meaning you can recycle them by taking them back to the grocery store. Only 3% of the bags um, end up that way, otherwise they usually end up um, in a landfill or on the way to the incinerator. If they do go to the recycling facility, this is where they um, end up clogging the machines of the recycling system, which makes our other recycling programs a lot harder to um, keep going. Another purpose, to reduce the consumption of fossil fuels. Plastic bags require non-renewable non fossil fuels to produce. Now, several years ago, um, four or five years ago now that Ashland has been a uh, Massachusetts green community, which is one of our things is that we're trying to reduce energy use, trying to reduce fossil fuel consumption. So part of this effort as well um, of, of regulating plastic bags is about acknowledging the fact that we voted ourselves 
a Massachusetts green community? And how do we really feel about that and what does that mean for us? I'm going to go to the proposed warrant article. So this is the current reading of the article um, that we are proposing. Single-use plastic checkout bag reduction. Thin film plastic use, sorry, thin film single-use plastic bags shall not be distributed, used, or sold for checkout or other purposes at any retail establishment within the town of Ashton. This wording is similar to others um, in our immediate area and around the state. If a retail establishment provides or sells checkout bags to consumers, the bags must be one of the following. A recyclable paper bag or a reusable checkout bag. Of course, there are some, um, there are some bags that are still going to be permissible under this, and that's you know, usually for um, health and safety reasons, especially with the separation of uncooked meats and fish, of course, separating your produce, which is in a raw state, it's not otherwise packaged, but also things like newspapers or dry cleaning where there aren't um, a lot of alternatives for those things. Right now those aren't, right now those are not included in the, in the plastic bag ban. They tend to be um, a much thinner material, um, than the, the typical grocery store bag. So these are the definition of the thin film, single-use plastic bags that we are concerned about. The shape typically has handles. There's a number of materials that it may be made out of. Um, I don't know what all these terms mean, and neither probably do you, but these are the things we would be avoiding. And a thickness of less than four mils. Right, so thin, thin film bags, but enough um, enough thickness on them that we cover a lot of plastic bags. Sometimes what's happening in communities is that they ban a very thin bag and the grocery stores or other stores will just get a little thicker plastic bag above the limit, which of course makes the problem worse. So we don't want that to happen. These are the definitions of retail establishments. So these are the type of businesses that would be affected. It's businesses that sell goods directly to the, directly to the consumer including retail stores, restaura uh, restaurants, pharmacies, convenience stores, grocery stores, liquor stores, um, any place that you might buy something and they put it in a plastic bag. What we would like people to be using, what we are encouraging, is a reusable checkout bag. And everyone has probably been given these for free sometime, um, probably in the recent past, um, by one of our local businesses who use them to marketing their, market their businesses. So a reusable checkout bag is a sewn, a sewn bag with stitched handles that can carry, obviously, more weight. It's machine washable. It's made of natural fibers or durable, non-toxic plastic and is no less than four millimeters thick. Um, or sorry, four mils thick. You, obviously, everyone knows what these are. We have examples in the back. And you probably, hopefully, have a little collection of them at home, just like I do. Recyclable paper bag. What we're looking for here is a paper bag that is in itself 100% recyclable, but that also contains at least 40% post-consumer recycled content. So you're not looking for bags that were made from uh, virgin materials, but ones that already contain recycled paper. Now, we're not reinventing, I should say, we're not inventing the wheel here, we're reinventing the wheel. Um, 55 Massachusetts communities already have some type of plastic bag regulation in place, including nearby Framingham, Grafton, Natick, Newton, Shrewsbury, Sudbury, Wayland, and Wellesley, but, um, which are, are close by. In fact, if you've gone to these communities recently, some of them are in effect and you um, might take notice of, of the type of bag you're being offered. So next, we'd just like to talk a little bit about transitioning. Like obviously, um, obviously making a change um, in anything that we do that we now consider ordinary and everyday sometimes takes a little bit more effort. So first of all, there's a grace period. If the, um, if the uh, regulations go into effect, there'll be a six month grace period to allow both businesses and consumers to make adjustments in that time. Um, so the, uh, 
we already had earlier, um, a few weeks ago, we had a forum for businesses. We found that there didn't seem to be um, a lot of concern with businesses in making this transition. We think partly because for the larger markets, um, such as um, Market Basket or CVS, they're already doing this in their other stores across the state. They already know how to handle it. The smaller consumers, um, or sorry, the smaller businesses, we haven't heard a lot of feedback from them either. So maybe it seems a small difference to, um, to go from plastic to paper in that case. would be interested in more feedback from those businesses um, and hope that they reach out to us with it. These are um, photographs of towns surrounding us that has already made the transition. This is um, Walmart, obviously, and it's basically just replacing one kind of bag with another, though we would still encourage people to bring in a reusable bag and not use the, uh, not use the paper bags um, at all, though businesses do find them, as they do with plastic, um, usable for marketing. This is um, a quote from a Natick grocery store manager just saying that the transition has been surpri surprisingly smooth. Now when you think about all, I guess, everything going on in your life, the fact that you have, are now using a paper bag or a reusable bag instead of a plastic bag, it probably really doesn't, uh, really doesn't affect you all that much. Along with uh, a happy customer here who was happy to have her picture taken with her paper bag outside the grocery store. So some of the um, transitioning practices, we're trying to be able to work with businesses um, uh, as, they, as they need it to help with their transition to um, away from plastic bags. We would like them to encourage customers to bring their own bags to the grocery store. And they may put up a sign such as this one to encourage them to do so with, um, you know, there's a, there's a note here about when the bag ban would go into effect so that they, they're aware, it's not, they're not caught by surprise. So the grocery stores give customers a heads up and encourage them to bring, um, to bring um, reusable bags in. And um, something that we're already doing in, uh, in Ashland, the farmer's market made this transition two years ago. Rob, right? That they're third season. third season at the Ashland Farmers Market, not using um, plastic bags, except um, in uh, very specific circumstances. So, and uh, it, it obviously hasn't slowed down traffic at the farmers market if you if you've been there um, on Saturday in, in the good weather. A little bit of a dark slide, but it's just showing the reusable bags in someone's trunk. Um, what I do here, what my mom does in Iowa, is simply keep some reusable bags in your trunk. You have them when you're ready to go to, go to the grocery store. As soon as I unpack the groceries, I put them back in the trunk. And I always have them with me because, man, it's just a pain to carry all those little plastic bags instead of carrying two or three of, of these guys. One question that's come up and we want to make sure we address is someone asked, is it, um, is it safe to keep reusing the same uh, reusable bags, um, but there's, there's no evidence really linking any kind of E. coli or um, other uh, bacteria to bags. I mean, obviously, if you spill meat in your bag or something, you might want to wipe it up. Um, I kind of compare it to sending my kids' lunchbox to school, like every day all school year long, and they don't seem to get sick or anything else seems to happen to them regardless, even though these lunchboxes are on the bus on the floor, in the lunchroom, and uh, who, who knows where, the kids are just fine and, and healthy. So making the transition, um, some things we do use these little plastic bags for, right? Some people use them to pick up pet waste, right? It's a good use for them. It's good to use them one more time before you throw them away. But there are alternatives to that too. Some of the things that we um, aren't included in the plastic bag regulation. There's still bread bags, there's still produce bags, there's still newspaper bags, other bags that you'll find for all of the kinds of products that, that come in. They're reusable too. You can save them in the same way and reuse them as pet waste bags. Or of course, um, you can always buy pet waste bags on Amazon or anywhere else very cheaply, um, hopefully uh, going toward the biodegradable ones instead of the regular plastic ones. Other times people use it to, um, bags to line their garbage cans. So there's kind of a little garbage bag inside of a big garbage bag. Um, 
So there's other things you can use for to line those too, if that's if that's something you really want to do versus just dumping the garbage in the bigger trash can. Um, so there's larger bags that that products come in that can be re reused. The paper bags can be used for that purpose, or you can just go linerless. So um, I think this is my last slide. I guess I was talking fast just to try to get through everything and have enough time for comments. So we have been really um, trying for the past, um, I don't know how many months, um, to, to reach out to the communities, not only through the business forum, but through the farmer's market, the Dragonfly Festival, Ashland Day. Um, there's an article in the paper, maybe two, to try to make people aware um, of this um, upcoming warrant article, to get feedback about it, to, to understand concerns, both from residents and from businesses, so that we can address those as best we can. Obviously, this, every member of the Sustainability Commi Committee is also an Ashland resident, and um, we want to do what's best for our community. So we want, um, we want that feedback. So Matt, maybe I can turn it back over to you. Um, yeah, so I think this opens up the public comment portion of the meeting. And I just want to say again, uh, well, thanks. Thank you for doing that presentation. And um, thank you to WACA for being here um, and recording it. This is very important for people to see and be informed before they go to town meeting. And um, even more important is for people to have the opportunity to give us input. So we have this draft warrant article um, that we showed you some slides, which talk about what's in the warrant article, but it's a draft at this point, and we are still open to feedback that could help us improve the warrant article. We really appreciate um, anyone who comes out and speaks to us, whether it's at the farmer's market or it's here, and tells us what they think. Um, so uh, with, without any more delay, I'd like to open it up. Does anyone have a comment? Uh, the, I think the way this will work is I'll just bring you the microphone so that people at home can hear your comment, and, and we'll have a microphone when we respond as well. Do you want to introduce other members of the sustainability committee so that we all might be answering the question? Sure, yeah. So um, why don't everyone kind of, well, everyone who's on the committee uh, just stand up and turn around. <laughs> so we have a few members of the committee here, um, Rob Mullenbeek, Michelle Brooks, Margie Gazelle, and Kyle Ehlers. So, um, and Trisha Kendall, I already introduced. Okay, so I think I saw a couple hands, and you're next. Okay. Um, first of all, I want to thank the uh, Sustainability Committee for bringing this up because I'm thrilled. I think it's really something positive for Ashland. And then two comments on the warrant article. Like, um, I'm a little worried when you say like single use because those bags aren't single use. And I, and I know you've probably studied it, but if there's 55 examples, did you look at 55 examples or get any feedback from the attorney general? Because I'd hate to have to, like you guys go through this work and I hope that it will pass. And then we just have the slippery slope of getting around it because that, that clearly isn't the intent and especially if it passes. So I guess it just, We'll just put that out there, hopefully. Um, and then, I live near Market Basket, and if you drive by there, maybe if you're driving by fast, you don't notice, but those little bags are all over the trees, too. So is there any way to work with that? Or if not this time, is there plans for that? And I guess I, I know you get a lot of feedback from the businesses, but maybe we should try because those are like I think for all the issues they really are the same issue and then they probably actually fly around more just for like just aesthetically when you say little bags just so I understand um like to say a pro that you put your produce in like oh okay so yeah okay so other bags that would be exempt smaller bags I I don't see the newspaper bags flying around and dry cleaner bags. So I do see the, the other ones. And they get overused because they're in the carts at Market Basket and then they fly around. So is there any way you can reconsider adding that? Um, it's a, I mean, it's a, good, it's a good point. I mean, we would love to eliminate everything that we can. Um, when we looked at the produce bags, I think th that was one where there wasn't a good example. There are alternatives 
but it's a little harder. Whereas with the carryout bags, it's very straightforward. It's like it's a bag that's transporting goods from a home, you know, from a store to your home. Um, so that that case is very clear, and, and there's a very clear alternative. Whereas with produce bags and some of those other ones, I, I think we've seen that, and we looked at other communities who who established these bans. And um, some of the language that we've used is borrowed from other towns like Concord or Wellesley. Um, forget the other one. But in those towns, they've tended to exempt. It, it's pretty consistent that they've exempted those types of bags. And we didn't want to kind of go into an area where it wasn't really well tested. So that's, that's another reason. Uh, OK, so I have, I have one follow-up on that. So we have two grocery stores in town. I, Thing, two, let's say two big ones, and those are the only two. Can we set a plan to work with them for an alternative? Because, like, I, I know you're volunteers. I don't want to assign more work, but this is really important, and that would be awesome. And I think that's the other big one out of those, of the plastic bags. Let me get you the mic. Yeah. Here you go. Yeah, the two alternatives that we've seen there would be paper, potentially. You need some kind of bag to put, put these things in, you know, somehow to carry them, carry them al along. So it would be either paper or maybe compostable bags. Compostable bags, at least they compost. But, but you know, so those are the two things. We did discuss it, but most people, mo most of the towns do accept those things. Mm -hmm. Maybe you can work with vendors. Well, I guess that's so, so I know part of it is people don't like to hear ban, right? We're, we're Americans, we like our freedom, right? But, but if, so I think we have to go this way that you're going, I think that'd be awesome. But if we work with the two grocery stores and we market this green community and if we can try to, to get, like that would be a really positive impact that they would be giving to our community. And so maybe take it out of the ban. I'm just asking about putting it under your purview because it, because I think Again, out of your examples you put, that is the one that is literally the same if you come to my neighborhood about the amount of impact. And I know literally to the oceans it's the same. So, so it's cutting the problem, but it's not fixing the problem if we ignore those. I think it's definitely something that we can consider. Um, maybe talking with them about Instead, those um, marine biodegradable bags are a little bit better because they do eventually um, degrade in the ocean. But the other kind of um, issue that we've come across with the big retailers like Market Basket and Shaw's, um, they kind of put you through the ringer when you try and contact customer service um, about this and ask them questions. And um, so we really haven't gotten very good feedback or answers from them when we've tried to reach out because they'll just send you on to a different representative. So um, I think it's something that we can consider, but in my experience I've also found can be difficult working with the bigger retailers. Um, and just in general, they've gotten used to these in other communities with the single-use shopping bags, but um, not with the produce bags. Yeah, I think it's it's something to consider for the for the future, though. And and you, we'll be monitoring the litter as we go forward and seeing if there is a change. And if we're seeing continuous problems with produce bags, then mm -hmm. that's definitely something that we'd want to to look at. It's really good feedback to know, though. What neighborhood do you live in? Uh, You're near Market Basket. Market Basket, but I think we I know. A uh, couple of comments, and uh, first I just want to thank the committee. I think this is just great, and Tricia, that was just a great presentation. Uh, I actually enjoyed one of these PowerPoints. I never do. Um, just to comment quickly, first of all, I'm very strongly supportive of what you've done here. I'd like to see it go much further than you've done, but as a first step, this is great. Good place to start. Relative to Kate's point, you know, I was thinking, like, how, how would that affect me if I couldn't put my little vegetables into a little plastic, you know, you, you, you rip them off the little stringer thing there and you put your little vegetables in. And I said, 
you know, mostly I don't do that. I come with cloth bags and I just put them right in the bag. But then I was thinking, okay, Mr. Expert, what about like loose Brussels sprouts? I mean, how am I, I can't, I'm not going to throw 80 Brussels sprouts into a bag. And then I started realizing that, you know, in the old day grocery stores or even in like Whole Foods where they have all the loose, you, you, you scoop it out and you put it in the paper bags. There's no plastic bags there, right? That's how the old general stores work. I mean, if that wasn't sanitary, okay, may, you know, somebody should come with a study, but that's how stores are still doing it today, some stores, and I don't see why it couldn't be that way. If they had a row of paper bags near the Brussels sprouts or whatever it is you want to put in, and they had like a little tiny one to pick up 10 Brussels sprouts or another one for a pretty good, you know, a pound or whatever you might get or a really big one, I, I would certainly use that. I'd, I'd strongly prefer that. Uh, you know, maybe it's, it's an idea. Maybe I'll try to bring my own bags next time. But I mean, I don't see why the stores can't do that. I don't see what the big problem is. And it might even be cheaper for them. I don't, you know, if, if that's the argument is that paper is cheaper than plastic, wh why can't they look into supporting something like that? Um, a couple of comments they have on this, how aggressive to be with this. I think Ashland is really a green community. I think we really, I, I think you're gonna have overwhelming, you know, I understand when you come up with policies, you're worried, what if, what if we go too far and they start turning against us? I'd say go for it, be, be more aggressive. I'm not talking about this, this town meeting, but I think this is a green community. We support this stuff, we love this stuff. And you know, as long as it's reasonable and it makes sense and it helps, I think that you could push much harder. I don't know if you can put that slide back up, but I was kind of appalled when you showed the slide that had all the quantities of garbage that they found. This is, to me, is really an argument to look into. I mean, I, I can't imagine what the, uh, pol the politics of it would be, but, and there's a typo on that one, but there you go, that's okay. That's, uh, yeah, see, the, it's, it should be ITS, but that's okay, nitpicking. Okay, so on this, uh, on this screen here, there you go, um, you know, when you look at plastic beverage bottles is overwhelming. I mean, if, if, what's the argument? Why are we looking at these numbers if not to say this is a serious problem? And why then, if that's a serious problem, don't we move to addressing it or pushing to try to address it? You know, you may have, it may not be legal to ban products. I, I have no idea what the, the issue would be. But I'd sure like to see us get, you know, push this as far as we can push it and do more. I mean, this is a great start. I guess that's the, the, the point one is let's do this for this time. And, and I, I, think, I think you're going to see that it's going to pass overwhelmingly. And, and then next time, maybe you can start addressing some of the other items on the list here. It'd be great. Anyway, that's about it. Oh, um, the, the bags that um, they'd be using under the, the bylaw are recyclable paper bags. Is that one of the options? but it has to be recycled materials? Um, yeah, I think that's something that we, uh, in the current draft of the bylaw, I think it does state a certain percentage recyclable, and there's some discussion still going on about whether to do that or not, um, but I think, I think the goal there, and I think other communities have done it, is just to make sure that it's the best option for the environment possible. So the, a couple of arguments. Uh, I'll, I'll admit that I was guilty of not having my regular cloth bags in my trunk and driving across town to Market Basket. I was doing other errands that day. And I actually debated whether to drive home and get the bags. And I decided that was using more uh, fossil fuel than just settling for whatever junk. So I took paper, because I never choose paper or plastic. And I ended up with the woman at the register. And they were very aware that this is coming. Uh, in market basket this was, that she said, let me double bag that for you because our paper bags are very thin. So I'm just cautioning you, if you don't put in a standard, I think that we're gonna end up, I mean, you were talking about this doubling up on plastic bags mm -hmm. if, you, if they're too thin, I, and I think you're gonna see that with paper. Anyway, that, that's enough. Yeah, yeah, I wanna get to this uh, person in the back. He had his hand up earlier. Here you go. Right. Thank you. Um, First of all, regarding the, the change over to the bags, um, Whole Foods does this. There's probably some other retailers that do the same thing. Um, as human beings in general, most of us will do anything if it can save us a little bit of money in the process. One of the things Whole Foods does is if you bring your own recyclable bag with you or cloth bag, whatever it is, they, knock you, they give you five cents off for every bag that you bring in. So it's in your best interest, even though it's not a ton of money, if I bring three bags in, that's 15 cents. Okay, well over the course of time, that adds up. So if the retailers in town, I'm not talking about Market Basket 
or Shaw's, but some of the smaller ones, if the same thing, if they are in a position to say, look it, you bring this in, I don't have to go and buy the short runs of paper bags because it's going to save me money, I'll give you this incentive of five cents off if you bring the bags in. And I think as somebody mentioned here, you just throw a bunch of them in the back of the car and yeah, my wife always has stuff in the back, so we, we just grab whatever's there. Never had a problem if you accidentally do spill meat juices or something, yes, yeah, spray it with Lysol and yeah, clean it out. It's not the end of the world. And I agree with what this gentleman was saying here um, of using the old, not old paper bags, but using paper bags to put the Brussels sprouts in. This is what I remember from my childhood. There was no plastic. Every single thing was different sizes of paper and you just put the vegetables or whatever it was in there, brought it up, they weighed it, end of story. That's just the way it was. Dry cleaning bags, I'd love to see those disappear. I don't know if there's a paper alternative or if people would even want to use them, having them crinkling around in their closet. But yeah, any the farthest you can push this, and the I'll just make a comment quickly on number two, the plastic bag, the plastic bottles, if there was a way with those, just like the beverage cans, to knock five or 10 or 15 cents, you'd have people bringing them in because even though it's costing them money up front, they're going to get that money back in their pocket. If there's a way to attach a, a, some type of financial incentive for people to do anything, most people will, will do it. So I just wanted to throw that out there for consideration. Hi, I just want to say thanks to the committee for um, taking all the time to do this and to hold forums and get feedback because I've seen you at some of the events you had the picture of. Um, I'd love to see some of the other trash issues addressed and when you start to do that, you know how to reach me and I'll come to a meeting and talk about a couple of my ideas. Um, the other thing I know about some of these stores is they're now sort of realizing that because people need to bring bags and they forget them, they can recycle their boxes by offering them to consumers. So Market Basket offers boxes to consumers. I know Trader Joe's over in Framingham does, the big box stores do. So that's a good way to, for them to get rid of more trash and then we have to get rid of it or recycle. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'm, I'm probably in the minority because I love my plastic bags and I reuse them in so many ways. And I think it's a people issue. You know, people aren't responsible with stuff and I think one of the things you could do, because I'm, I'm really shocked when I read on Facebook, people didn't know you could recycle these at the supermarkets. And they know they can't throw them into their um, recycle bins, but they don't know how to get rid of them. So I think trying to educate people so that maybe fewer of them wind up in the trees as kites or whatever. Um, the other thing is there, there can be unintended consequences. Um, because one of those slides said something about um, they're safe to use. Um, and there have, in fact, been cases where norovirus outbreaks have been um, linked specifically to reusable bags. Um, the, other, the other thing is that if you're leaving them in your car, please make sure they're clean because your car is a breeding place for bacteria if you have any kind of cross-contamination in your bags. And um, there was a third thing, but uh, oh, there's also a, a big outbreak right now of hepatitis A in California, directly linked to plastic bag bans. And it has more to do with um, a homeless population, which isn't necessarily our demographic, but there can be unintended consequences. So. But I do think you, you have a responsibility to make sure people are educated into how they can recycle these. So thank you. Thank you. Does anyone want to? Do you have anything to say? Okay. From what I read, the norovirus was transmitted by some girls that were together in the bathroom, and it wasn't really because of the bags. Um, I believe so. Now, in terms of the hepatitis incident, I haven't heard about that. I would have to look. 
And your third point about recycling these bags by taking them to the grocery, yes, you can take them to the grocery, but I'm not sure what happens to them after that because it's extremely costly to recycle plastic bags. And um, there was a quote from the former head of the California EPA, the regional EPA in California, and he said it costs $4,000. This was about 10 years ago. It cost $4,000 to recycle a ton of plastic bags that makes an item that can be sold on the market for $30. We have also made some significant efforts at educating the people in town about plastic bag recycling, and it doesn't do any good. It doesn't good. do any good. It really doesn't do any good. Um, just a quick thank you as well um, to the committee for doing this. Um, my concern about the produce thing and not pushing it a little further would be that Market Basket in particular already containerizes so much of their produce in those foam trays with plastic on top of it that um, I think we're going to push it push it to yet more of those trays um, and I'd love to see those trays banned that would be a, a huge thing in my book and if we could just go across the board with the plastic uh, produce bags and the foam trays and go to the paper bag idea um, I personally bring little tiny reusable bags for my produce and once you get in the habit of that they just go in a bag inside the bigger bags and they don't have to cost a fortune. They used to cost a fortune because it was a, a new fancy thing but now you can get them. In fact, uh, Toby who does stuff at our market um, makes some really, really pretty ones that she sells for mesh. Yeah, mesh bags for two bucks a piece. And, Perhaps we could promote them through the supermarkets um, and make our local artisans some money as well. Um, and also just as something that we can use as an example as we try to promote this to our um, fellow Ashlanders is that the entire country of Kenya has just gone plastic bag free. And that's not just supermarket bags, it's produce bags, it's newspaper bags. It's uh, small garbage bags. They do still allow the great the heavy duty liners. Uh, you can't even use Ziploc bags. Um, so just imagine your life without any plastic bags, particularly if you're a very, very poor person who can't just afford to go buy a bunch of snazzy uh, reusables. So if they can do it, we can do it. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. Um, yeah, I just want to respond one more thing about the recycling, um, because I think it's an important point. I, there was a slide that showed the rates are somewhere around like 3% for recycling plastic bags. And whenever I go to the store to put my bags in those boxes, it's usually pretty empty. So I think there's work to do around that. And um, even if the bag passes, I think there is still education work to do about that, because there are types of uh, film wrap and things like that and other bags that can be recycled in those containers even if the grocery bags are no longer a problem. So I think that's that's an excellent point. Um, does anyone else have any feedback? Even if you're um, maybe you're in favor but you have a one concern, one nagging doubt. Okay. The committee has been talking about all the bands as well, you know, and we've been thinking about styrofoam. This is not a thing that people are taking on. And think about small plastic bottles is another thing that the towns uh, want to ban. But I think we want to just start with this, you know. We don't want to take it all on, and I think we agree. Understood. I, I don't know how aggressive we should be, but let's just see how this particular thing goes and how it works out, and then maybe we can go on and do some other things. Yeah. Anyone willing to volunteer, sign up sheet is in the back for our next issue. So um, any other questions, comments? Um, I'd just like to thank all of you for coming out tonight. It's so nice when there are other people. We don't want it to just be uh, the committee meeting and talking to each other. We want to hear from other people. So um, it's nice to see new faces and hear, hear from you. Um, with that, I think uh, I've 
I, I don't know if I have to do I do a motion to adjourn a public forum. <laughs> okay. Okay. All in favor.